Combining new school geometry with short travel suspension can be a recipe for fun when it's done right. And more and more riders are realizing that they don't need 160 millimeters to have a good time, even if the trails are rowdy. I'm Mike Levy, and this very green bike is Norco's all new 2020 Optic. So before we talk about geometry, we need to figure out what this thing is for. It's got 125 millimeters of rear wheel travel, but at the same time, Norco's done things like spec four piston brakes on all models, and all models also get RockShox's Super Deluxe Ultimate D8 shock without a pedal assist lever. Now, all those things are items that you're more likely going to see on an enduro bike, not a trail bike. So while it's a trail bike of sorts, it's definitely ready for some rowdy riding. So Maybe it's just a mountain bike. I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of numbers at you now. I'm five foot 10, Norco says that puts me on a large. This bike is that large with a 480 millimeter reach, but it doesn't feel all that roomy when you're sitting down. The seat angle, 76 degrees. Rear end, 435 millimeters on large, but they change by five millimeters on every size from small, medium, large to extra large. So rear center length changing depending on the size. Not a lot of companies are doing that. Up front, 65 degree head angle on a bike with 125 millimeters of travel. All right, so we still need to talk about one other thing and it's something that Norco calls gravity tune and it comes down to their geometry. Now, you remember when I said that the rear center length changes? That's exactly what I'm talking about and they're doing that so that the rider's center of gravity stays where they want it in between the two axles. Now, they've sourced some already available data that gave them some average dimensions of a person who might be riding this bike, and they've balanced the rear center length with the front center length, the head angle, the low offset fork, all that stuff, to the point where they told me that they don't even want riders to change the stem length for sizing. They would prefer that riders change handlebar widths to alter their reach number. All right, on to suspension. Now, if you know the previous Optic, you know that this one, well, it looks a lot like that bike. Horse link, vertical shock, and a tiny rocker arm that compresses it. But this rear end is all new. Norco's changed pivot locations, and they say that it works very differently to this bike's predecessor. 125 millimeters, that's not very many millimeters. So Norco's had to make some changes to the suspension to get the most out of it that they could. Up top, they've upped the leverage curve, so it should be more supple at the beginning of the travel. Now remember, that's important because you're gonna have to run this bike fairly stiff. Speaking of that, at the other end, there's more ramp up to keep you from smashing into the end of the travel when you overshoot those drops. Now inside the shock, there's also an aggressive high-speed compression tune and all those things together. Well, Norco's created an impressive little package out of just 125 millimeters. So this green bike, it's the C2 and it's the third one down from the top. It goes for $4,500 American and it has a mix of X1 and GX drivetrain components with a Pike Ultimate Select Plus up front. Now this is also the bike that we've been riding in our annual field test. I've put a bunch of miles on this bike and I've been riding in the Whistler Bike Park like I said. It's been a blast. You're gonna have to wait for the field test review to come out, but let's just say that it's obviously a whole lot more capable than its travel would make you think. All right, put your hand up if you're sick of listening to me talk. It's time to go riding. Let's do this.